lucky enough to have very good teachers and mentors along the way. And I think, um, I actually think a lot about when I started to get towards this crossroads, some conversations I had with uh, my former undergrad advisor, Professor Roger Tobin, who was the the chair of the physics department during my time at Tufts. And we had spoken several times after I graduated. And he said to me, look, like, if you want, like, you could do, you could do your physics PhD. Like, I know you've got it in you. It wouldn't be easy. It would be really challenging. It'd be a struggle. Uh, but you could do it. And you could also be a rabbi. You've got it. You've got that in you too. So the question is, like, what do you want to do? And at the end of the conversation, he said to me, more physicists should think like rabbis and more rabbis should think like physicists, which I thought was a... You just see things as they are. And I think it takes a certain amount of detachment to do that. And when you do that to your own feelings, you kind of take power of them rather than them controlling your actions and behaviors. I've definitely found out, like, I'm used to be the kind of person who when I was like intoxicated I would like drunk text or drunk call people things like that and then recently I think about a couple months ago I had gone out and had a couple of drinks and like someone had someone had sent me some like kind of stressful text messages who I was kind of flirting with and I decided that I was too drunk to respond so I didn't until the next day and then I remember telling one of my friends who's known me for many years about that and he was just like wait I can we go back like I'm so proud of you like you've grown so much yes if it if it's something you're interested in I would definitely recommend it uh try it for a while see how it feels um for me there was a lot of letting go like I had to quit my job I had to not have a place to put my things for a while and that was interesting I didn't totally get rid of all my stuff like some people do hi yeah I I didn't take it to the extremes as everybody not everybody as some people do but at the same time I did what I was comfortable with so I would recommend it as far as in like figure out what you're comfortable with and if you really feel called to it try it out nothing is forever nothing's permanent you might have a hard day you might have a bunch of awesome days just take it as it comes but I could see this lifestyle that I've been living, I could see it working for a lot of people because I've traveled to a lot of places and one of the first things out of their mouths after we've had five minutes of conversation is, oh, I wish I could live that way. Yep. And then I always ask them, well, why don't you? Yep. So I guess it all depends. I shouldn't say for everybody because, you know, the inter- making money on the internet, I mean, there are so many different ways. Like, I, I sometimes have to think and remember that even the way that I make money on the internet, it's not the, it's not, it's in, it's actually a weird way in terms of making money on the internet. Other people make it in so many other ways. That's a good you know, point. some people, my, my job essentially is my work on the internet. Um, but some people, or sorry, my like passion, which is to spread the vegan message and show people my adventure, that's my way of making money on the internet. But other people, let's say your passion didn't result at all in like something that people wanted to see on the internet or would support you. You can also like trade stocks on the internet and then make your money that way and then go. I'm right, right, totally. And that's us once, excuse me, once again, trying to figure it out. Mm. So that open pause has to have patience because it doesn't just happen in a second. Um, But the, uh, sorry, I'm like blanking on the first part of the question what oh how does it feel in this moment i apologize okay Uh, i it was a perfect pause to me (laughs) so um finding the flags and the little like sensors in the moment takes practice you know like and then again forgiveness right it's that same getting caught as to why it's hard to figure it out at the moment. Because <laughs> we're caught, you know? It's like being underwater. Yep. And you're trying to hear, like... 
Well, from what I understand, and I've, I've only spent a short amount of time in the Eastern Hemisphere, if you will, as I was getting to know the practice of yoga. And so I'm not versed enough to say that I was living, you know, in an ashram or I was living in, in, in breathing and kind of, um, you know, in the depth of, of my own practice. However, I understand that, that we have made it more physical, but I think it's always been physical. So I think it's all relative, you know, and when we try to get into the place where we're going to compare it, then we're judging it. So if we're really practicing non-judgment, what does it matter? right? Where does it ultimately depend? Um, I think there's an infinite amount of explanations, right? Through curiosity of students where this is kind of how I love to treat these conversations or if students bring them up is, is being involved in the conversation is enough. Try not to. Yeah. And I think it's, and she's always been super inquisitive, but I think it's like helped me to become more inquisitive Mm -hmm. with anyone you know, yeah. Um, rather than just people who I think I can learn from, like Mm -hmm. I'm going to learn from anyone if I allow myself to ask the right questions. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I just find myself doing that more and taking the time, you know, and not being so rushed in my interactions Mm -hmm. because it, we found even through podcasting that like, it kind of takes a little bit of time for people to warm up to open up so to not rush through interactions and and also I think I've always been a good listener but I think I've gotten a little bit better you know just like kind of being more present I I I think okay I've always been a good listener but like being more present in the list it's that kind of you can philosophically dispel but rationally, they like hold some weight, you know. It's the same thing as what we're talking about with balance. Mm-hmm. Of like, philosophically, I can completely destroy in my mind the idea of balance. But rationally, I understand that like I'm balancing on this chair right now. It's still weird. It's still yeah. a concept. Yeah. So it's. Um, it would be rather assholeish to completely disregard. Although the same thing with try or but or any of the other words that I can honestly overly police myself about right but then it comes back to what is your intent and how is that helping you sustain your own growth because mm-hmm. if you well, walk around like sustain thank you <laughs> if you if you walk around and like you hear someone say try i used to do this actually i would like Correct give them, them a lesson yeah, yeah. same that shit or, is unsustainable yeah. speaking of sustainability well, I'm 26 like what lesson am i really going to teach someone about like linguistics or something other than collectively swing in the other way and people are talking about everyone is just a mirror of you and talking about yeah. mindful speech and communication and it's so true it's crazy i never remember like when i was younger nobody would talk about this stuff like no. i don't know if it's just me or like nobody was talking about letting go <laughs> no not at all it's so funny um but yeah, it's. I think people are just becoming more conscious. I think that's what it is, because we're so much more than just like this physical body. And yeah, mm-hmm. I think that's something I've noticed, which is like wild to think about. The last few months, that like everyone really is just a mirror of you, and like once you change yourself, like the people around you will change. And it doesn't mean like that people. It could mean that people around you will start to leave, and like new people that are on your level will like come into your life but it also could be that the people that are ready in your life are just gonna level up with you and and i take my headshot to the bucket and then i walk into his office (laughs) and i was like (laughs) yeah i walked into his office and at lunch and i was like hey is uh so and so here and they're like yeah he's in his office with you know his assistants i was like cool i had lunch dropping off lunch and they go oh yeah sure walk in there go in here and i go uh I go, hey, uh, so and so. He's like the biggest cast director in, in LA for commercials, and I'm like, hey, uh, so and so. Uh, my name is David Murphy. Uh, you clearly don't like me, and that's okay. I just want to, and you haven't brought me in. And uh, I go, uh, I just want you to know, black people have been using chicken as a peace offering for years, and I want you to have this on behalf of me. <laughs> so we're friends, and you preserve bring me in for auditions. And he started busting up laughing. He's yeah, like that's the f- <laughs> he's like that's the funniest thing anybody's ever done. And he's like they all the whole office is laughing, and he's like, "Who are you again?" I was like, "David Murphy," and he's like, what, "What's your agency?" And then he brought me in for audition the next day. 
it's in our advertising and marketing everywhere it's all over the media everyone should be afraid to die it's in our religions fear god fear god fear death um you're going to hell judgment day it's just ridiculous um and i've just found like on other places like in on in eastern cultures um death is like celebrated um I remember ending up at a funeral in Thailand on accident because I didn't speak the language and I thought they were having a big party that I got invited to and I was so excited to be there and I was sitting in the service smiling at everybody, waving and no one was crying because like, they just wait to do that and um, I had no idea I was at a funeral. I thought I was like, at, I don't know, someone's like barbecue or something. So I think that... Um, yeah, I think it depends on where you live as far as spirituality is like needs to be worked on and needs to put effort in and needs to like there are fallacies in it because of human nature. Like human nature is fallible and um Oof. I think that 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 is really important to recognize like even though there are these people that you might find that it's like oh my god, like we there's something here, you know, um that human nature is a thing. You yeah. know, and and you have to work on that and work on yourself and work on you together to get to a point where you're like, okay, this is this is better. But of course, human nature still comes in. But it's 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 still this thing of like, there's something there that 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 is special, it's magic almost. You know, yeah, that internal knowing. Yeah, and to bring it to science again, I would say for me those moments are dropping the need to intellectualize and to give proof and justification and this one woke monkey that was like I'm gonna wash this and he brought his potato or whatever it was <laughs> and washed his potato and it was better it was cleaner you know it was there were probably benefits to that potato being washed other monkeys saw this happen and they followed in suit. Some monkeys were like, no man, I'm sick into the old ways. Like, I don't want your change, monkey. <laughs> I like my potato how it is. <laughs> I like it covered in dirt. And, um, you know, there was a, there's a number. This was the study and I can't remember what it was. I, I can't remember this this magical number, but there was a certain number of monkeys that followed in suit and they washed their potato. And that was like the tipping point. That's what they call it. And that's the cool thing, you know, it's, um, it, it, it's, it's funny because people are still discovering what you can do with podcasts. Ooh, it's as, yeah, it's still just ballooning. Yeah, you know, don't let anybody say, oh, you can't do that on a podcast because you know what? Nobody knows. <laughs> And history is only shown. Go ahead. I just it's just saying nobody does. I'm just adding to what I was saying. But you're saying history is shown. Yeah, that the the thing that people say technology is not going to do, technology does. Yeah, I mean, or there won't be an audience I'm, for that. I'm kind of old, so I remember people going, "Why are they putting cameras on phones?" <laughs> That's a great example. And now it's so normalized. Oh, yeah. You know, it's like, why wouldn't you? That's so interesting. I wonder also thinking about what you're saying with your story that that was part of you getting into podcasts. Like chess for dummies and feng shui for dummies, two tomes I live by, by the way. That's how I learned how to do chess and feng shui. Whoa, cool. <laughs> but I feel like, you know, sound baths are almost like meditation for dummies. And I don't want to misspeak. Like it's, you know... I don't want to misspeak, but if you've never meditated before and you're like, I'm scared of that, I don't think I can do it, I don't know how, the sound bath will get you into a meditative state. It gets your brain and your body into a meditative state. You don't have to do anything but let it happen and just lay there. And um, the great thing about that is the, you know, once you've been to a meditative state once, you know what it feels like and you can find your way back there more easily, whether it's through another sound bath spontaneously or through a trying to saying, okay, I'm going to try to meditate now. Wow. Yeah. And That's a mind blowing thought. It's really true. It makes a practice that can seem really inaccessible. <laughs>
Well, I feel like intimacy is personal. I feel like that's a different spectrum. I'm like, the, like words, don't take words personally, but I don't know. I got a thing about my, my body energetically when like, I just think we're going to talk about sex now. Okay. I just think I got to, I got to interrupt to share uh -huh. the Deborah Silverman video you oh, brought yeah, up yeah. and she talks about what did she say? intimacy <laughs> into me. I see. And that's a Scorpio thing? <laughs> to me, I see. Is it damn true? <laughs> I forgot. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just think, like, sex is the most... Vulnerable, it, intimate, Like, personal. emotionally, <laughs> physical. That is the most personal thing you could do. And what I don't understand about our generation is, like, how could you... Oh, my God, I tell my girlfriends this all the time. How could you be... How could you have sex with somebody and then worry about what you're going to text them? How could you do that? You know, equality, you know, to make this like a better world, you know? Because at the end of the day, we're, listen, we're in a really fucked up time right now. Um, I think, and this is going to sound crazy, but I think white, pe white people, especially white men, are kind of realizing the days of being mediocre and and is is coming to an end. And what I mean by mediocre is if you were a white male, and you you ask a white male this and they'll spit in my face and they'll never think this is a thing, right? But if you really think about it, if you really, really like study and analyze success, right? You would see that, like, if you think of compartmentalization, or do those seem more separate? Um, no, I think focus is focus is a fine way of looking at it. Yeah, I mean, there's there's things I have to do and there's things I want to do, right? And it's like, which one am I going to focus on? And you know, obviously, focus you know, get the things I have to do done, but also save space for the things that I know that Jeff needs in order to do a better job at other things. And so I think focus, you know, I, I keep coming back to self-care. I think like that is, that's a real word that I am reminding myself of kind of on a daily basis. Sounds super selfish, does I hope my wife I... isn't listening to this because, um, but you know. I it's, hope she does, uh, yeah. hello. Hello, um, but it's, if I don't focus on that first, everything else is just, yeah. I agree with that. Some of the most perfect example of this. So with my ex, we basically in the beginning of our relationship, he was like, okay, because I think I had started training, but I was well into training for the Olympics again and all of that. And so he was like, okay, this is what it is. We are going to, you're going to train. You're going to go to 2016 Olympics. After that, we're going to go on a whirlwind fucking world tour and see every every place in the world that you want to go we're going to do that and then we're going to come back we're going to get married we're going to have kids and that's our life that's what we're going to do he gave you your whole he five year plan he basically gave us our, your whole life plan. our whole life plan together and at first because like i was so focused on like training and like kind of listening but not listening like i was not like actively listening to what he was saying and like thinking is that really what i want to do at the time i was just like okay sure Fuck it, sounds good. I, I do want to go on a world tour. <laughs> so I was like picking parts out of that line and she was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. And I was like, that's some, if I could like give everyone advice who's listening to this is like diversify your social media feed. Mm. That shit will change your life. I make everyone ever do it in my, all my clients, all my, I talk about it on social media a lot, diversify your feed. Because if you are not, if you are looking at the same type of bodies every single day, you're going to get a complex about it. Whoa. Yeah. It's going to fuck you up. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Because it's not accurate to the world and the variability of bodies. Yep. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. So much of this stuff too to, is, is just the getting, for me, I'm realizing is the getting so obsessive compulsive zoomed in on something mm -hmm. and, and missing the whole bigger picture of what the diversity of bodies there is. That and is the theme, yeah, with the food and then we, because we talked about it with nutrition, we yeah. talked about it with bodies and now we're talking about it with like social media. So like nitpicking at your food, nitpicking at your body, nitpicking at like other people's bodies, you got to zoom out. You got to.
lots of people get hurt and don't walk into schools and shoot up kids. Similarly, I think a lot of people use this as an excuse for themselves, and like people will be like, oh, I had a hard year, I had a hard thing happen to me, and so I'm gonna not try as hard. Um, and so like at a societal level, I don't think that, like I think we should be more giving to the people who have had bigger struggles, but at the individual level, I think people should strive to take more responsibility for themselves and not you know, take responsibility away from other people who are misbehaving also. Absolutely. It's so tempting, like when someone says something mean to you, say something mean back, and then you have like two upset people, and it's just like, I don't think that's, like if you play that all the way out, it's not a good answer. No. It's true, although the other option is, which I guess is somewhat better, but I also don't think it's the most productive, is that a lot of people will just sort of stonewall or ignore, or you block them on Twitter, or you, you know, ignore them from your personal life, or whatever it is. And I think that's the, it's a better reaction than getting in a big fight all the time, but it also doesn't necessarily address the problem. Always there and always helping me to be more balanced in my life. And to me, the transition happened with um, my best friend at a time, having uh, gone through some difficult period, uh, falling into a really terrible depression. And um, I just convinced her to start doing yoga with me because I knew that yoga had helped me. And her recovery was so fast that I wanted to learn more. And um, so I just signed up for teacher training in therapeutic yoga just with the intention of understanding more because I'm a bit of an intellectual slash geek and I like to understand things. So I just wanted to understand how yoga works and how yoga can heal. And that's where I really had my, my deep contact with um, yoga philosophy and I just... Or some awareness of time, would we have an awareness of things changing even? I don't even know. Maybe not. It's possible. Why do you say that growth always feels uncomfortable? As I feel like in some ways you're someone and part of why I wanted to talk yeah. about this topic with you is that you love change and growth and yeah I mean I do but it's also still comes with um, all of the emotions too like you still have that but in a weird way I kind of crave that I like just crave growth and learning more and seeing more meeting more people, doing new things constantly. Um, I guess Gemini's just get really bored really easily. And we have to be like constantly. Be still on stage, like actually helped me with this. Cause I, I actually filled in for that play. Like the guy was fired and I had to learn his part in like a week. Wow. And, uh, and I was like terrified. To my, take on a whole new persona. Yeah, and uh, my, my my AJ the army man. Right, AJ the actor. Um, that was kind. Of, I was just freaked out. I was I was like, oh my god, I'm not going to be able to do this, right? And and I remember in the rehearsals, uh, <laughs> one of the guys that owned the theater was like, you know, uh, <laughs> you you can't, you know, you're a dancer, but don't be so, you know, expressive. Expressive, like, because I'm so used to not. I'm so used to telling a story on stage without my voice at all, you know. Whoa. As a dancer, you have to do all this pantomime, and you have to make the audience know what's going on in the story without even using your words. And so that's I'm used to everything being very.